Hey followers, this is your boy, Movie Maker Doug 55. Today I have my coach and mentor, actor Andy McPhee, with us. He cannot show up right away, but we also have a uh, Kristen Vahin, I believe that's right, and we and she has an incredible story to tell about her life journey. Hey Kristen, how you doing? Good. How about yourself, Doug? Doing very good. I, you want to explain to our viewers how we met? Yes, I would love to. Doug and I actually met, wow, it's been two months already, hasn't it? Um, in Phoenix, Arizona, and um, at the 2021 National Woman of Achievement pageant. Um, his friend Andy was actually one of my judges. He was very nice, though, not too uh, intimidating, which was welcome <laughs> but that's actually where we met and we actually um did a kindness pledge and took some pictures and it was it was amazing meeting you yeah it definitely was i remember uh posing posing with you with uh your business card giving the kindness pledge that was so awesome and that's actually the first time I've personally been able to do the pledge with somebody. So that was very special for me. Usually it was my daughter, um, since this is actually her baby, um, my platform that she started back in 2011. So she's been the one spearheading this at the beginning stages when we started implementing the kindness pledge. Um, so it was, like I said, very special that I actually got to do it once and it was with you. Yeah. Yeah. I have the business card in my wallet right there. I still have it to this day. A photo of it, everybody, is right here. <laughs> so yeah, Kristen, it was great to meet you. The, the Woman of Achievement pageant was a lot of fun. And just to let my viewers know, I was invited by my coach and mentor, Andy McPhee, whom she, whom she and I mentioned. And he invited me to the pageant as a little bit of a learning experience for kind of showing me the ropes of being a professional person. And what you may not have seen or may have seen, there was a lot of work going on between me and him because, you know, with, with me dealing with high functioning autism, some of the things about my personality, I don't have control over sometimes. And it was a little tough at first, but I got used to it eventually, and and it I really enjoyed the experience. It was a great learning experience. No, it, it was definitely just an amazing weekend, and um, yeah, sometimes, you know, to overcome your challenges in life, you just have to dive in the deep end, and you did fantastic, Doug. I mean, it, like I said, it was such a pleasure to meet you and you were so pleasant and welcoming. And um, it was definitely a highlight from my weekend there. For sure. Everybody, the video of me saying the pledge with her is right <laughs> here. <laughs> All righty. So Krista, Kristen, yes. I must ask you, uh, where are you originally from? Um, I was actually born in Billings, Montana, but um, my family grew up in northern Nevada. So we were only there a month and then we moved back. So between Reno, Carson and Gardnerville, Nevada, which is all the valley areas below Lake Tahoe, is primarily where I grew up. That's really cool. So you are you in the northern Nevada area or, or the Vegas area? No, I'm in the north. So I'm about... 40 minutes from Truckee, California, just right. If you look at the state of Nevada, we're right in the, the point there where it meets California in the northern, like the northwest corner there of Nevada. Pretty cool. So yeah, I, after that, I must ask, what are you doing these days? <laughs> well, Pandemic aside, I during the day, I'm a mortgage loan officer with Prime Lending. So we've been exceptionally busy over the last year with refinances and now purchases. So that keeps me busy during the day. Um, and then it, it's been a lot of work every weekend with um, Be the Stone and the Kindness Crew doing our signs of kindness, because it, it's just our way to um, promote that positive, kind message without, you know, getting into people's spaces and it, you know, really being respectful of the protocols that are in place due to the COVID restrictions. 
So yeah, every weekend here in Northern Nevada, you'll see us out on a, a corner waving our signs that say, you know, it's cool to be kind, have courage, be kind, um, and waving and smiling at the drivers passing by. That's really cool. Yeah. So what made you decide to go into the pageant industry? Well, I actually, when I was younger, I did compete in pageants, um, primarily in the Cinderella scholarship program. And then I did one year in the Miss America organization when I was 18. And then, you know, life happens and you move on. And um, when my daughter um, decided she had an interest in pageantry from there, it was just being a support and, you know, her coach and pageant mom to her over the last 17 years. So this was actually just a fun thing we decided to do over the summer when I saw um, this opportunity present itself for a role reversal. So she, I thought, oh, how fun it would be for Mackenzie to be my coach and get to tell me what to do <laughs> and pick out my clothes and get me ready. Um, but that's so what kids something do anyway, Kristen. That's what kids Andy. do anyway. You know? <laughs> so, you have the, so you <laughs> have the devil background, Andy? Well, no, no, that's not correct, Doug. I don't have the devil background at all. It's the little voices in your head. It's his um, end. You know, the little voices in your head. Uh, you one can get be my Aussie bit, humor, uh, bud. Nasty. <laughs> uh, Kristen, I used to do pageants, but they banned me and said, no, we don't want you. This, you're not suitable for pageants. No, I'm kidding. Now that's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> all, yeah. all I'm good for is uh, judging. Um, you have to excuse my bit of a gruff look here. I'm heading back to Australia for some uh, some film roles and stuff. So, you know, the characters they're looking for, you know, a little bit like I'm looking now. So, um, hey, that's real me life, Andy. Like, hey, what? <laughs> it's real life. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. So I've been listening to a little bit of the conversation and, um, yeah, it's uh, – yeah, the WA, the Women of Achievement WA is really cool. It really does give people a chance to, you know, um, just share whatever's occurred in life. And it doesn't, and a lot of people tend to think sometimes with like like WA or when they see about it um, or what we're doing with uh, my community global, pro, sorry, my global community project uh, for Spark, which is people with disabilities. So we've called it abilities, right? So it can be anyone in any circumstance, whether it be through accidents or birth, whatever, whatever it is, like autism, um, you know, wheelchair users. We have a lot of people in there that have had accidents and have ended up, you know, being wheelchair users through, you know, what's occurred. Um, cerebral palsy, uh, vision, hearing impairment or blind or deaf. Uh, but it's not all of It's not some people go, oh, I don't know, it's like it seems a bit depressing. I said, no, it's not. It's life. That's what happens. And sometimes because of those comments, people tend to hide a little bit. So mm -hmm. we're creating a project where people can get out and share their creative talents like you're doing. And then I handed it over to Doug and three other people who have uh, vision impairment. One's got Turner syndrome, Doug's high functioning autism. So I step away and give it to them. And now they've all got this amazing opportunity to do that. And, and women of achievements are saying, you don't have to have anything drastic happen to you. You might just be a stand for um, cleaning up the local area or beaches, trash removal. It doesn't have to always be, um, you know, dark situations, which can happen in life. Um, it's everything. It's everything to help yeah, inspire think, people. In life, we all have a very unique story and, and things happen to us for a reason. And, you know, I look back um, and the things and the hardships that I've gone through in my life, God put those in my life so I can minister and be there for others and be a light. Um, yep. And this is kind of what he's put on my heart is just spreading that love and kindness. And it, it's so relevant today. I, I mean, the things we see going on in our world with the violence and the hate, um, just being able to spread that message in, a, in my own way. And hopefully it has that ripple effect where someone will see it and then that'll affect their day and then they'll pass it on, you know, whatever each of us can do yeah. on a daily basis to spread that love in the world. That that's what, that's what's so important right now. Yeah, and the ripple effect is important because uh, Doug and myself, when we set up our uh, relentless and unstoppable, that only came about because I've been coaching Doug for five years, six years now. And I said about a year ago, I said, listen, Doug, 
I think it's time we shared your story. Let's just do an interview and put it on your YouTube channel. Well, 40 guests later, now it's it's impacting people's lives. Like Doug will get emails from people um, saying, you just saved my son's life. And we're like, whoa, hey, wow, that's a big statement. You know, and she just wrote, look, he, he was watching the series. He watched the one on uh, mental health and suicide awareness with Kevin Hines, uh, who wrote The Ripple Effect. He jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge and survived. Four of my other friends who've dealt with it. And that's impacted because this kid saw that they got through all this. And she said, I can't tell you. It, it, it's just impacted him. And he's a whole, he's seen now there's hope for him. It's not just about, you know, his view of the world. Like, he is a perfect human being who can contribute, you know, like, like we all are. Exactly. And, th and that's the thing to keep in mind is that it may seem small to you, but it could be something huge for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So um, you just never know what your one small act and putting yourself out there um, will do and what it's really oh. truly capable of. You know, like I, and I know Doug's in the silent room at the moment, but um, what, what I'm saying is, I, I, I don't even coach him anymore. We're friends. We're actually running a business together now, um, you know, going to uh, help create, help get people to create their websites and social media platforms because I, I'm coaching. I still mentor Doug. There's no fees involved anymore because he's, he's gone beyond, above and beyond whatever I even thought would happen with this. Like I can't even – Looking back at him when he was 320 plus pound, and this kid's now riding 12 kilometer, 12 miles on bikes. Doing, I got him to do yoga and weight training. He's, he's never quit anything. He just has not quit anything. He's incredible. Like he, he inspires me now. You know, and I stopped charging him. I said, I'm not charging you for coaching. We're going to work together now. You know? Yeah. And it's been a privilege to be working with such a big influence like him, like, you know, it go becoming his client was the greatest decision I ever made. And I'm just curious, Kristen, uh, what happened? If you went through any struggles, uh, what happened? And what were they to get to where you are? Um, ooh, they kick me off. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah we're still, still here. here. Oh, it kicked me out. Okay, well, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. You got to love technology. How, how dare love it kick you out. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I um, had a myriad of, of things growing up in life, um, anywhere from abuse as a child to, you know, in a not great relationship as an adult. But, um, I look back on that and a lot of people would let that defeat them or, you know, affect them in some way. But, um, with the grace of God, I was just able to maintain more of a positive mindset in the, in the sense that I didn't let that become who I was. That was just a small piece of my puzzle. And I let that make me stronger. Um, and now I'm able to help others. Um, and you never know when they're going to come up. Um, just through a story or through a conversation with somebody and you can relate to that person and be a light to them and, and help them. So it's, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't take any piece of what has happened to me in the past and, um, take that away because that was meant for me and part of my story to be the person I am today. Yeah, absolutely. And look what's yeah. going on here. Like just the fact that I met Marlena, who's the CEO of Women of Achievement Awards. I met her quite a few years ago. But just the fact meeting her has two years later created this, you know, that we, we're we now speaking to you. We've spoken to quite a few other women and interviewed them. Um, and I'm, I'm personally, when I coach actors, um, uh, and I've got a course running uh, soon, I, I, I just keep telling them, you've got to join the dots. You have to you have to look back and go. You didn't just randomly end up here, like dots join. It's someone you spoke to, or someone you met, or a decision you made. And when you look back, you can actually line up these dots. I'm not saying they all line up in a good way. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Um, but you know, I look back and go, "Wow, I've just 
and I'm sorry, I don't mean to make this sound about me, but I'm just giving an example. I met a guy 20 years ago in Australia, and he's just writing a big crime series in Australia for Australian TV, uh, him and another director who I know, and they want me on the first series. Now, the only reason that's happening is because 20 years ago, I met this young writer then coming out of a, a college and he asked me to be in his short film. There's no pay. It was his third year graduation film. He took out all the awards. I've never worked with him since, but we've been friends. And 20 years later, here he is offering me this role in a big deal. So it's it's whoever you meet. Like, we've met you. Um, I met Doug through his brother. Now, it was his brother that I was coaching for years for acting, and he quit. And then Doug just happened to say, well, I wouldn't mind doing a bit. That's all he said. I wouldn't mind. Like, I don't know if people really get what what Doug's created and we've created together, but it's massive. Like, working with people in, in Ghana, uh, helping them raise funds for their movie for uh, uh, harassment in the workplace against women. And I'm like, oh, my, I would never have dreamed of this happening, you know? And it's because it all, of what you said, you know? It all starts somewhere. And, and that's the thing is you never know what – what truly is capable or, you know, you can bring to fruition unless you take the leap and try. Yeah. Now, yeah. can I ask you a question? I'm going to ask both of you because um, <laughs> we all go through trials. So, um, and the first thing I'll say, Doug said, oh, it was a great thing meeting Andy. Not everyone said that in my life, <laughs> 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 right? But, but, what he said is because it, it, then it sort of sounds like, oh, well, Andy, you're a great. You're a coach. You're a mentor. No, I'm just sharing the mess I created for 69 years of how I got out of that. I've not been trained as a coach nor a mentor. I'm just recreating the messes I created for 69 years. And people go, yeah, but hang on. From day birth, yeah, from I can go back to two years old where I started giving my family health because I get the stories from my sisters and brothers, right? <laughs> so that's where I get mine from. So I'm going to ask both of you where, and this is the same question for both of you, what do you do? Because sometimes people tend to lose, go, oh, man, wow, you're doing so good. And Doug, wow, everything's good. No, it's not. I struggle at times every day to get through things and come out on top. So what do you do when something comes up for you that, just takes a hold of you for that day and gives you heaviness. You go first, Kristen. Okay. Um, I think the first thing it's important just to take a step back and take a deep breath and just kind of try and clear your mind. If you stay in that negative space for too long, it, it can, it's like a virus that'll just overtake things. So that's the first thing. Um, I know I speak a lot of God, but he's a huge part of who I am. Prayer is so important for me um, just to lay it at his feet. I mean, there's nothing that he puts in my path that I can't overcome. It may seem huge to me at that point in time, but I can always look back and say, wow, you know, like I got through that. I'm stronger than I thought I was. But um, I think it's important too to have good people around you. You know, you are who you surround yourself with. So having my family and my husband, who's there to um, kind of steer my course a little bit when I get off and say, hey, you know, like you can do this. I think it's so important having that support system and those people in your life that are going to lift you up and um, carry you through. Yeah, 100%. 100%. What's your answer, Doug? Well, one thing I know for sure is, you know, I've realized over the years that I'm not alone with struggles and I'm not a perfect person. I may be, you know, I may be the team leader that I am. I, and I am a team leader, but I'm not a perfect person. I do have setbacks in my life. And You know, I do have those inner voices that try to tempt me into going down the wrong path or to, you know, uh, trying to make me forget who I am. 
And I also have an inner voice every now and then telling, reminding me who I am. And what I do is when I'm freaking out over things, and I even do it sometimes with Andy, every time I'm freaking out or getting overwhelmed or anxious, which he can always hear, by the way, by my voice, (laughs) uh, what I do is I just take a breath. Like there have been a couple times in our calls where, where I where I'm getting worked up and anxious over trying to figure something out or problem solve. And Andy's like, Doug, take a breath. And every time I do so, I find the answer to the problem like a minute later. Actually, I'll jump in there. I don't tell him to take a breath. I tell him to get outside and go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. That's what I mean. Doug does because we all do. I have to get outside and take a walk sometimes. I mean, yes, okay, for Autism Month, yes, absolutely. Yes, we can we can bring a couple of people on for coffee and conversation instead of doing it for relentless. There you go, see? You just came up with something that triggered an idea. Yeah, I'm really glad we're talking about this and working things out. Yeah, because what we do is now we can bring those people on instead of counseling and say, hey, next Wednesday we're going to do a coffee and conversation. It's going to be about Autism Month. And in fact, Doug, bring everybody you can on. Like if we can have three or four people on there sharing, that would be really awesome. Like it could be a and a panel-like episode, like Christine did. Yeah, okay, let's, you make a list of all the people that we know with autism and the ones we haven't met and invite them to the U.S. Uh, time of Coffee and Conversation, what suits them. Now, we can do it any time, so you need to send an email out to the people who are dealing with autism and say we want to bring you on to our coffee and conversation it's not relentless and unstoppable it's a relax you know um but doug's so what what he said so true that's sort of why i put the little um devil angel there because we did a, a conversation the other day about that yes you know the little voice in our head never stops it just does not stop because it's part of the mind it, it will keep going and sometimes we get trapped in the voice that's, you know, the one that is putting us down or things won't work or, you know, creating emergencies out of things that aren't emergencies. And, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a landmark introduction leader. I'm, I'm a Christian. I ride with Bikers for Christ. Am I the perfect faithful follower? Oh, my gosh, no. Like, you know, I've been riding motorbikes for a long time. Um, I've, you know, hung around with some really cool dudes, but some heavy dudes and now I hang around with some cool dudes, heavy dudes, but they ride with bikers for Christ, you know? And that's the crowd I like hanging with because we all love motorcycles. So um, the thing is we're never we're never perfect. And, you know, I've there's days like you said, I'll I'll I'll, I'll make sure I've have a I have a Christian group that I belong to that I created and we all talk each day. I read my Bible, I share with a couple of ex um, uh, friends of mine from um, a motor, an outlaw motorcycle club, um, who are Christians now, and you know they're changing the lives of other guys who are looking for help. And um, is everything perfect? And do people sometimes look at you and go, "Well, hang on, man, you're you're a Christian, and you do you know some of the roles you play?" I said, "Yeah, I know, but that's for me to deal with. You know, it's not who I am. I'm playing roles. I'm not I'm not that person. You know, and uh, some roles I won't play." But like you said, it's like sitting, taking a breath, prayer, and um, then looking at your situation, asking for help if you need it, you know. And, uh, you know, when I mentioned Landmark, Landmark was a big change in my life. Now, um, I'm not here to sell Landmark or defend or anything, but that was a huge change in my life because it got me to see how I've been behaving, like just my my patterns, you know, because sometimes you can't see them. They're like this. Mm-hmm. And one of the leaders the other day, one of our coaching calls said, not everything's an emergency. And when she started talking about that, what came up for me is I went, you're so right, because emergency services, whether it be military uh, during war times or, you know, riots, police, ambulance, they're all going to emergencies, but they don't go freaking out at the emergency. Mm-hmm. Because if they did, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be able to control the situation. They wouldn't be able to, the the ambos wouldn't be able to take care of the person who could be you know in a car completely crushed or messed up. They have to stay calm in an emergency. Exactly. So, 
Yeah, and so we, I like, that's a good saying. Do I have an emergency now? No, it's just something that's occurred. Don't let it take you over. And it might not be a good thing, but the minute we lose control, then it starts putting us in other areas of we're not going to handle this properly and take it out on others. Exactly. And I think it's good to, you know, have the strength to recognize an issue, you know, mm-hmm. within yourself and seek help. So that sometimes that's the hardest thing is when you know something's happening and the asking for help. Yeah. I know growing up, that was my hardest thing. And sometimes I still struggle with it because mm. I think, oh, I can, I can deal with it. I can handle it on my own. And, yeah. you know, you get proud, but there's people that, that want to love you and want to help you if you just let them. So it's just sucking it up sometimes and saying, I, I need help. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And I know Doug's learning that because his relationship with his family sometimes, uh, and he'll he'll share this with you about when he, he gets a little upset because the, the autism can trigger that as well, you know. Um, but he's learned now to um, just, if something's c- occurring in the house, he'll take a breath and go, hang on, am I just putting that on that person? And they actually didn't do anything. I don't know what day they've had. They're not coming in to be angry at me, but I'm putting my load on them. And next thing there's an argument. And Doug's told me many a time, he goes, oh, I just had an argument with mum. I go, but what was it over? And then in the end, when we talk, Doug goes, no, oh, that was me, wasn't it? Because I didn't think about what mum's done at work, where she's travelled, she's flying around, she's, she's a psychologist, she works in the prison system. And I said, you don't know what day she's just had. And she doesn't know your day, but we can't put that on other people. And his transformation in those areas is incredible. Like it, it really is. I just like, want to say for the record to add to that, the other day, something very similar to that happened to me. And it was, and it wasn't actually me that did it. It was just somebody I encountered during a walk. And it was something that was very similar to a story that Andy told me a while ago. I was walking my dog, Bunny, across the neighborhood and I encountered a, I encountered a neighbor that was walking with his baby stroller and Bunny went up to kind of sniff it. And the person was like, control your effing dog. And I was like, I, I, I apologize, man. I, Bunny is very friendly and, and I, she's friendly. And what happened was the person right away saw how polite I was being. And he was like, Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm having a bad day. Wow. That's, um, gee whiz. Did you learn that off me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, that's why I was polite to him. I, I did exactly what you did. Yeah. That's well, see, that's amazing. And, and this is, this is what I, I love working and doing these, these relentless and unstoppable because, Back in my day, I was very aggressive. Like with road rage, was not a not, not a good thing for my side because I had a lot of road rage back in Australia. But what Doug just shared, and I think the story he's talking about might have come from this. I was at a coffee bean the other night in a drive-through, and the guy in front of me um, didn't move when the car in front of him moved, and uh, I was actually on a call to a girl in Miami who's just finished doing um, the three-day forum at Landmark. And we were sharing about how the distinctions and being an integrity and listening to that voice in your head or this one saying, oh, yeah, tell them this one going, no, don't, and all that sort of stuff, jokingly. And I tooted my horn and the guy took a second, then he moved, and then he stuck his hands out the window and went like this, like, settle down, settle down. Then he went like that, time out. And I'm like, Mm-hmm. the old me the old me's going go and tell him Andy and then the other one's going yeah, that's not who you are right so I just yelled out hey dude I'm not angry I was just letting you know that it was actually a patrol car black and white I said I was just letting you know the car in front's moved I said I'm not having a go at you I just wanted you to move so we can all get our cop and he went well you never know in LA I said no you don't but what I am telling you I'm not angry I'm just I just let you know so anyway the girl on the phone was laughing and she said, wow, Andy, that was cool. I said, yeah, it wasn't 20 years ago, though. <laughs> I said, but it is now. So I get around to get my coffee, my sandwich, and my cake, grab it, give him my credit card. And he said, no, no, don't worry. The other guy paid. I said, what guy paid? He said, the guy that just went before you. I said, 
what did he do that for? Like, he's going to know. And he said, I'll tell you why. He told me, pay for that guy's meal because he just he just took away from me what we do every day, getting angry at people. He said, he was, he was so nice and polite to me. He wasn't being mean. He said, pay for his meal. And I went, wow, that actually works. Like, you know, it was shocking to me to go a simple little thing like that and he paid for my meal. So it's what Doug said. You just don't react. You know, I think that's the hardest thing as, as humans is not to judge one another, mm -hmm. you know, you, like you guys are both saying, you don't know someone's story or what kind of day they've been having or what's fueling how they're acting or reacting to situations. And, you know, it's just, again, just simple acts can make all the difference. We weren't, mm -hmm. uh, I just went through, get, there's a coffee place called Dutch brothers here in town. And it's one of my favorites and they're always, and I just love going through their drive through because every time you go through, like you leave with a smile on your face, because everybody is super kind and full of energy mm -hmm. and they're just such a pleasure to talk to. And I mean, you could be having the worst day ever and you'll leave their drive through going, that's awesome. But when uh, I was pulling in one day, um, there was a gentleman holding a sign on the corner and he's like, need help, um, lost hope. And I don't know. I don't, for me, I don't help everybody I see with a sign. It's when I feel this calling on my heart mm. and then I'll be like, you know, I need to help him. Like, it's just like this, this tugging that I need to do something. So I mm. went through the line and I, um, ordered what I was going to get. And I asked the girl, like, what do you recommend? What's a good you know, general coffee that you, you know, anyone likes. Mm. And I said, there's a gentleman over there. I'm going to get him a coffee. And then, so she told me she rang it up and then she's like, Oh, by the way, like I comped the coffee for the gentleman over there. I'm like, Oh, you didn't have to do that. And then I went over there and the guy was gone and I'm going, Oh no, like <laughs> I really wanted to help him. And I looked and he was standing over on the side of the road, like by a fence, by a field. And so I, something again, and I know it's, it's God told me to pull over. So I parked the car and got out and walked over to him. And I said, were you the gentleman that was just standing there? And he said, yeah. And I'm like, here, I got you a coffee. And I got him a muffin top, little pastry. And he goes, no, really? It's okay. I'm like, no, like I'm, I want to do this for you. And he said, you know what? I've been having a really crappy day, but you know, it's a little bit better because of you. I appreciate it. And what I've learned with some of these people is they just want to be seen like yeah that's right it's it's those little acts and when you feel that tugging at your heart to act on those because like that I don't know how big of an impact but it had but just hearing his words and it was so genuine that I I know that yeah. little act is going to stay with him yeah no see what you just said then is so true like you just said sometimes these people just want to be seen and when I went through this self-expression leadership, uh, self-expression and leadership program in one of Landmark's courses, the purpose of the course over three months is as individuals, we get to create exactly what you guys are doing in WIA, right? We pick a platform that we want to create a community project. We bring people on board to help bring that to life. And then once we've got it running, we step back and let other people take it over. Now, I thought, oh, okay, this doesn't sound easy but it doesn't sound too hard holy cow it was like wow there was 80 of us there and some of the programs people came up with community projects non-profit was amazing and you know like there's been over from i think a hundred thousand non-profits created from this particular program and the, we have a one in australia called uh, i was going to say relentless and unstoppable i wish uh, <laughs> it's called it's called are you okay day and it's once a year. It is the biggest nonprofit in Australia. And anyone can Google that. You'll see how big it is. That was created out of this program in Landmark, right? And so I thought, wow, okay, I'm going to do this. And what happened in the end, I created this platform called Spark to light up people's lives who feel they're in the shadows or they can't express themselves because there's so many people out there in these situations that are so creatively um intelligent and and they, they can't get a chance to show people some of them are, are amazing leaders and speakers and you know uh, event organizers but they just feel that you know maybe they can't get there so i thought let's create a platform where they can just share share the heck out of what they do and then i walk away from the program and give it to people in the program with special abilities and i went 
wow. And what it did for me, I went, gee whiz, that's what this is all about. You can create whatever you want. You just get stopped by that little guy on the shoulder. And I'm not the smartest dude around, let me tell you. I, I was miserable at school. I failed terribly. I, I couldn't build a picture frame if you actually stood there and told me how to do it, it would fall apart. I'm just not good at things like that. But over the years, I learned what I am good at, and it's this. Mm -hmm. You know, acting I love, um, voiceover I love, and this standing for other people. And and there's never a thing in my head about the money for it, never, because there's no money in this. This is just what you said, going to someone and just sparking up their day a little bit, you know. That's, um, that's the reward. I mean, honestly, yeah. that's that's the pay. I mean, I almost feel a little guilty sometimes when we do like our signs of kindness and things, because it makes me feel so good. <laughs> that, I know, right. But you're really, I mean, the heart of it, you're doing it for others and to promote a message and really spread that love and kindness in the world. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, even doing random kind of, you know, acts of kindness, it is so rewarding for you. Um, just to, to have that connection with somebody else and see that, that light. Yeah shine and, um, and that's so, right yeah, the light that's shining awesome. and all that's that's why we called it spark i thought we've got to have something that's to do with like you know a lighthouse or something like